So, today I'm going to talk about the rotary. We are going to work on a rotary attachment from am.co.za using the 60 by 40 uh, with the 80 watt tube laser cutter. This will be our rotary attachment. Plugging it in is very easy. We lower our bed and put our rotary in position. Correctly positioning the rotary, you would want your motor further out closest to the controller, away from the direction of the movement of the beam. Plugging in the cable, easy. Just slot it in to the attachment and secure the screw. Models are different. Some have a flip switch to turn on the rotary. Some, the motherboard will do so automatically. Today, I'll be using an empty cylinder for our test and graving. Firstly, I would want to place it onto the bed, move my axis, take my focus spacer, 18 millimeter, place it below to check my focal distance. Right. The challenge with the laser cutter 6040 is the motor on the rotary and the motor on the y-axis do not always rotate the same number of times. So you'll find that if you do a square using your X and Y on the machine, it will print a square. But on the rotary, it might print something further than a square. So you would want to check your step length value. So firstly, I'm going to tape my cylinder with some masking tape. Mark my origin and then flip my switch to turn on the rotary attachment test if it's rotating. Secondly, I would want to reduce my overall speed of the axis by 50%. It was on 200 millimeters per second. I'm going to put it on to 100 millimeters per second. Take my vernier caliper and measure the diameter of the rotary object. And I've got 64 millimeters. So firstly, I go into menu, user setting, scroll down to rotating, and input the diameter of the object I want to work with. I've got 64, and right, escape, out. So simply, I'm just gonna do a little square, which I will engrave, but I'm gonna work with 30 by 30. And then come to my powers. Most importantly, I will increase my speed so much that I know it's just going to print on the tape and not bend the tape. So I'm gonna engrave at 400 millimeters per second and to a power of 12%. Just enough for me to mark the tape and not actually mark the actual object, right? And send my file to the machine, right? I go on file and I see my file and then it comes in the preview. Mark my origin and frame the position that it's actually going to print and then start the file. So it's supposed to actually just print 30 by 30, but you can see the object is rotating on the y-axis more than 30 millimeters in 
distance. Right, so this was actually supposed to be a square. As you can see on the preview, it's supposed to be a square. On my x-axis, I do have 30. But on my y-axis, it exceeded 30. It is 53 millimeters. Right, I place back the can. We're going to do a simple proportions uh, calculation for the step length value using the simple formula. Actual distance 53 divided by design distance which was 30 millimeters times the step length value in the controller of the machine to get our new y-axis step length value so we come on the controller we press menu scroll down to manufacturer setting enter scroll down to y-axis which is the one that is stretching Navigate to the right and scroll down to take our step length value, which is 3.15 and four zeros. So we're going to say 53 millimeters divided by 30 millimeters times 3.153 zeros, which is our step length value. This step length value is not always the same on all of the machines. Some are 3.15, some are 3.17, some are 3.18, but they determine the travel distance of the whole entire bed of the machine. We take our calculator and say 53 divided by 30, and we get our value. Multiply that value by 3.15. The zeros make much no difference and we get our new step length value right we now come to the controller and edit the new step length value into the machine 5.565 and three zeros and just scroll down to write the value always write the value that you change on your step length so that it can be saved Exit, move your axis back into position. Mark your origin, go to file and pick the same file that you engraved before. Frame and start. If the formula is correct, we'll actually see a square on the tape instead of a rectangle we got before. Once you calculate your step length value for your y-axis for the rotary unit, write it somewhere. Maybe stick it on a piece of vinyl and write it onto your machine. That way when you use your rotary unit again, you just go into the manufacturer setting on the y-axis setting and input that step length value. And once you are done using it, revert to the old step length value so that your y-axis can fully travel or entirely on the whole bed of the machine. Right, so you can evidently see that the first time we got more of a rectangle, but the second time we got a square. We can measure to check preciseness, but I have faith my formula was correct and we got 30 by 30. I'm happy with that. Now we got the correct step length value to use our rotary attachment. Each time I want to uh, engrave a rotating object, I'm just going to put in my new step length value and 
whatever design I'm going to do for the particular object I'm going to engrave, I know my dimensions are going to be the same as the design file. That's how it's done. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.